This is Sue Terry, Senior Fellow uh, at CSIS. This presentation is on Washington's evolving policy and perspective towards North Korea. President Biden today faces no more intractable foreign policy problem than North Korea. North Korea has proven to be one of the most difficult and persistent problems in US foreign policy since the start of the Korean War. The North Korean threat has not ended or even declined with the end of the Cold War. North Korea continues to produce nuclear weapons at a rapid rate. Estimates vary, but it could have enough fissile material for 60 weapons or more. It is producing enough material for 12 additional weapons per year. In addition to short-term and medium uh, range missiles that can hit Japan and South Korea, the North is also producing missiles that are capable of reaching all of the United States. Although North Korea might not have perfected this technology, US military planners and politicians can no longer assume that Washington is safe from a North Korean nuclear strike. Now, the North is working on missiles that can be launched faster, are more difficult to detect, and are harder for ballistic missile defenses to stop. Kim Jong-un recently threatened to improve his nuclear arsenal even further, including the development of tactical nuclear weapons. President Biden's predecessors in the United States have tried every approach short of war, which will be a calamity for all involved. The United States has gradually tightened sanctions on North Korea over the years, uh, including the multiple United Nations Security Council resolutions, uh, while keeping the door open uh, for diplomacy. President Trump in 27 amped up this threat of military action with fallen fury rhetoric. He then tried personal diplomacy with Kim Jong-un to convince North Korean leader to denuclearize with high profile summits in 20, between 2018 and 2019 in Singapore, in Hanoi, at the DMZ that essentially achieved nothing. So what should the Biden administration do? Launching a preventive strike on North Korea as President Trump contemplated doing in 2017 is a terrible idea. That is unlikely to eliminate North Korea's entire nuclear arsenal. And it will just cause a conflict in the region and potentially even a nuclear conflict in the region. Yet embarking on another round of all or nothing diplomacy to convince North Korea to relinquish nuclear weapons in return for sanctions relief is unlikely to be any more successful than when President tried, uh, Trump tried it in 2018, 2019. Also standing still and doing nothing while just waiting for sanctions to continue to bite a containment strategy that might be safer, but it still allows North Korea to expand its nuclear weapons and missiles program. Moreover, the Biden administration is likely to find itself with even less bargaining power than even the Trump administration enjoyed in Singapore and in Hanoi, given the impro impressive progress North Korea has made in developing its nuclear and missile arsenal since the Singapore summit. North Korea now has in position nuclear arsenal that is more advanced than ever before. And President Biden really is the first American president to enter office since North Korea demonstrated that it has missiles capable of hitting the US mainland. On the sanctions front too, now North uh, United States has less leverage than it once did because China's and Russia's compliance with the United Secu Nations Security Council resolutions today is considerably weaker than it was in 2017. Both China and Russia have relaxed pressure on the North Korean uh, regime considerably uh, in, in, since 2017. So we know that North Korea continues to circumvent UN sanctions. 
and that goes for Russia as well. Uh, and South Korea too, under the Moon administration, is eager to have a breakthrough with North Korea. So South Korea too has pushed for some sort of sanctions relief on North Korea. So United States has less leverage than it even had in 2017. So what it should be the Biden administration's North Korea strategy? I think for the near term, it is all about reducing the threat in the short term. Most Korea experts and policymakers in Washington now assess that North Korea will not give up its nuclear weapons, uh, given the incredible advancement that they have made in both nuclear and missile program in recent years. So North Korea policy under the Biden administration will likely explore whether it will be in the US interest to pursue negotiations with North Korea, they will result in an interim freeze deal. They will seek to limit North Korea's nuclear weapons capabilities without actually eliminating them. Some of uh, President Biden's advisors have argued in the past that it is just too late to persuade the Kim regime to surrender all of its nuclear arsenal. So instead, uh, it is possible that the Biden administration will not explore an option to a possibility to see whether an arms control dialogue with North Korea is possible in order to manage the problem by putting a cap on North Korea's nuclear weapons program. But uh, the approach that the Biden administration take will still be very different from that of President Trump, because all of the pageantry and drama and theater, along with you know all the exchange of love letters, that would be uh, not what President Biden favors. Uh, President Biden and the Biden administration will favor more principled approach, reverting back to a more conventional working level diplomacy, while closely seeking to coordinate and implement a sustained and coordinated policy with US allies and partners in the region and around the world. In assessing what is realistically possible, the immediate goal of the Biden administration will likely be to quantitatively and qualitatively limit, rather than eliminate, North Korea's nuclear weapons capabilities, while still maintaining a long-term goal of working towards denuclearize North Korea as um, you know, former National Intelligence Officer of East Asia, of North Korea at the National Intelligence Council, Marcus Golaskalaskas explained, denuclearization should be maintained as an appropriate long-term goal, but we really need to, you, US needs to really pursue a more realistic short-term goal. Many proponents of arms control and freeze deal now argue that capping North Korea's nuclear program, while it does not lead to full denuclearization, will still reduce the threat posed by North Korea and therefore is the most realistic policy that the Biden administration should pursue. Um, but the counter view, of course, expressed by more skeptical experts is that North Korea is unlikely to admit international inspectors or abide by any agreement that it negotiates. And concluding an agreement to limit North Korea's nuclear arsenal would simply just give North Korea what, or what it wanted, uh, which is a recognition and securing international recognition as a full-fledged nuclear weapons power. But the Biden administration is right now going through a North Korea policy review and it will consider whether some or significant sanctions relief in exchange for a genuine freeze of North Korea's nuclear and missile program is warranted, at least as a first interim step with the goal of moving towards verifiable, verified dismantlement of at least some important facilities and nuclear weapons. The Biden administration may well decide pursuing this option would better be better than allowing uh, such a deal 
would include uh, or allow um, for North Korea to just continue uh, with his nuclear missile program as it's currently doing. Now, what would such an interim deal look like? The elements of such a deal would include North Korea seizing production, further production of fissile material, putting a limit on its existing stockpile, closing down Yongbyon. But more specifically, the United States will likely seek one, limiting North Korea's production of weapons grade plutonium, highly enriched uranium and tritium. And it would seek to limit its capacity, North Korea's capacity to produce nuclear weapons. This also means restricting the size and sophistication of North Korea's deployed nuclear arsenal. But secondarily, it means limiting the overall level of North Korea's nuclear force by limiting the number of nuclear armed delivery systems, limiting the development and production of nuclear capable missiles and launchers. So for example, solid fuel missiles, land and submarine launched, uh, Song series and so on. Kim Jong-un himself left a, a opening to, uh, for a possible freeze deal when he stated himself that he's willing to at least freeze his nuclear weapons program if conditions are met. But for Kim Jong-un to accept such an agreement, he would have to calculate that the benefits of the concessions provided are more valuable than additional coercive leverage that he that would come from a larger, better equipped nuclear weapons arsenal. So what are the chief challenges? The chief challenge for the Biden administration are many, but it's really the fact that North Korea is unlikely to agree to any sort of an agreement that does not include maximal sanctions relief. Such insistence by North Korea demanding maximal sanctions relief upfront explains why the talks between President Trump and Kim Jong-un failed in Hanoi, as well as subsequent talks. The Trump administration uh, during the Hanoi meeting with Kim Jong-un, they were the Trump administration was willing to uh, give a peace declaration to declare the end of the Korean War. Um, they were willing to exchange liaison offices with Pyongyang, but what Kim Jong-un wanted in Hanoi was maximum sanctions relief. And the Biden administration understandably will be very cautious about rushing into such a deal with premature sanctions relief because history has shown that Kim Jong-un or just North Korea in general, history, history has shown that they will be tempted to cheat on any deal if premature sanctions relief was granted. North Korea has repeatedly sought and received sanctions relief, but all the previous agreements fell apart. All the previous agreements with North Korea fell apart over verification. So verification and compliance will be another significant challenge of an, any kind of interim deal. After decades of failed agreements and, and covert nuclear development, nuclear development by, by North Korea, the Biden administration will insist that any agreement has to be clearly verified, not only by US national technical means, but by a multilateral organization like International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, which has extensive prior experience in North Korea, as well as on ground presence. Washington will also demand that significant costs should be imposed for non-compliance. But Kim Jong-un is, un is unlikely to agree to verification and strongly uh, will resist any intrusive on-site inspectors, particularly of sensitive missile operating bases and military sites. So given these challenges, the Biden administration will need to convince that any interim deal with North Korea provides a net advantage to United States, South Korea, and Japan, 
compared to the present unconstrained situation right now. But alliance coordination proof could be proved to be difficult too, because any interim deal uh, with North Korea were, were have to support US and our allies' interest to avoid weakening of US South Korea and US Japan alliances. The current Moon Jae-in administration in South Korea may welcome an interim deal between United States and North Korea, but Japan is likely to resist it. The Biden administration, for example, may be interested in beginning a process of pursuing a cap on North Korea's nuclear uh, intercontinental ballistic missile uh, arsenal, but Japan would understandably not be comfortable with an interim deal, that, interim deal that leaves North Korea's theater range nuclear capable systems unchecked. And compounding the problem for the Biden administration is that right now they are going through this policy review and they don't have a lot of time and, and before North Korea might revert back to provocations in the near future. Historically, North Korea has always welcomed new US administration uh, with weapons tests uh, in order to dial up pressure uh, on the United States. So to, to get back on Biden's radar, North Korea may revert to a campaign of testing uh, missiles and revert back to provocations. So what should be a way forward for the Biden administration? Uh, at least engaging with Kim Jong-un at the highest level has, has taught us what it is that North Korea seeks in the near term. In the near term, North Koreans are seeking to secure significant sanctions relief from Washington and international community. North Korea is not interested in giving up its nuclear weapons program, despite all the symmetry and diplomacy. We, the United States have offered both in Singapore and in Hanoi, we dangled prospects of economic development and possibility of brighter future for North Korea, but they were not really interested in that. They want as much sanctions relief as possible for right now, and but still be able to keep their nuclear weapons. So in other words, Kim wants to have his cake and eat it too. So the main question for the United States right now is whether the US should seek at least an interim agreement with North Korea, even though North Korea is unlikely to denuclearize, which is, so this is an approach that seeks to again, quantitatively and qualitatively limit rather than eliminate North Korea's nuclear weapons capabilities while still maintaining a long-term goal of working towards denuclearization of North Korea. It's an approach that seeks equilibrium, equilibrium uh, where North Korea has enough nuclear capability that it feels confident enough that it can deter preventive conflict with the United States, but not so much that it is confident that it can initiate a conventional conflict with the United States. The US and its allies must be clear eyed though about potentially significant consequences of rushing into a deal with maximal sanctions relief. Because if an interim deal does not translate to a denuclearization deal over the long term, then US and its allies would have abandoned the most important leverage that we have, which is sanctions relief, if we give it to North Korea too prematurely, while giving North Korea a de facto nuclear uh, recognition, international recognition and acceptance as a nuclear weapon state, which then of course uh, pose a potential for regional proliferation in the risk of regional proliferation over the long run. So in any future negotiations, US and its allies should seek to limit their military activities, um, seek to potentially, it's okay to see if an interim deal is possible, leave a door open for diplomacy 
to see if a genuine interim deal is possible. But uh, if that diplomacy fails, then we have to be able to go back to deterrence and containment of North Korea. And that's the only realistic long-term solution to pursue deterrence and containment policy until there is a genuine breakthrough with North Korea. Thank you.